In this video, I'll answer viewers' questions on mood and energy levels in MS. If you'd like to better understand these common and yet invisible symptoms, don't turn away, because that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. If you're impacted by MS and you want to up your game, please consider subscribing to the channel and ring that notification bell so you're alerted to all my upcoming content. I love doing YouTube live streams where I answer your MS-related questions on the fly, but I can't always get to every question. In this video, I'm answering archived viewers' questions on two very common and yet invisible symptoms, mood and energy levels. So let's jump in and answer some questions. Jennifer H. asks, why is it more likely to suffer from depression? Jennifer, it, people with multiple sclerosis are twice as likely to experience clinical depression compared to the general population. And there are some theories as to why. One simple yet sensible theory is that the unchecked inflammation in your brain is a setup for someone to experience depression. There's also some studies that look at various anatomical regions of the brain that may be impacted by MS and correlate with depression. But I also think that there's a very real world phenomenon. Waking up and not knowing whether today all of your body's going to be working is anxiety provoking and can lead to depression. The good news is depression is readily treatable. And I have many videos on this channel specifically talking about tricks and tips and how to manage depression. I'll throw a link up above in case you want to check that out and include a link in the description below. Make sure that you're talking to your MS provider about depression so that we can treat it and we can beat it. Liam C. asks, Dr. B, how do you treat anxiety in MS? I've been on two SSRIs which have stopped working over time. Recently, I had a holiday where I had a panic attack at the airport, which sucked. Thanks. Liam, anxiety is also very common amongst people with MS, and it's treatable. Let me throw out two pro tips. The first one is to hook up with a cognitive behavioral specialist a psychologist that can help you through talk therapy process anxiety. This has been studied and it's been shown to be very effective. And if you haven't yet worked with talk therapy, it can be an awesome avenue to identify triggers for anxiety and to learn how to break them. It's really good, awesome stuff. A second pro tip is to meet with a psychiatrist. Many well-intended neurologists, myself included, and internal medicine and primary care doctors readily prescribe antidepressants and anti-anxiety medicines. But the grand wizards, the ones who are the most adept and skilled, are psychiatrists. And so if you're having anxiety, which is challenging to beat, I would definitely hook up with a psychiatrist who can help you dial in the exact right medicines. Thank you for the question. Linda asks, do you ever suggest weighted blankets? Yes, I do. Anecdotally, weighted blankets help with anxiety. I've had patients in clinic tell me that, and I even have a family member that benefits from using one. It's worthwhile trying out. And if you've never been under a weighted blanket, it kind of feels awesome. Angela writes, question, what's the best medicine for insomnia? Seroquel and Ativan are not doing anything for me. Angela, my opinion is that I don't like sleep aids. I don't like using sleep aids to help people induce sleep. Now, sometimes they're necessary, but I would much rather us really dig in and try several behavioral measures, something that I refer to as sleep hygiene. I'll throw a link up here to a video I did where I map out ways of improving your sleep. It's hard work, but if you are persistent, you can improve. If we need something to assist with sleep, my fave is actually melatonin. Melatonin is a natural substance, it's over the counter, it's a safe product, and when people need something to help induce sleep, that's my go-to. Kitty White writes, question, my fatigue feels like I've been drugged. I cannot stay awake. Kitty, fatigue is the most common symptom in MS. It's one of the leading causes of loss of work, and it's invisible and frustrating because others can't see how profoundly tired you are. I will link a playlist up here where I've done several videos on how to combat fatigue full of tricks and tips to help you game out how to do better. Question of the day. Which amino acid has been shown to help fatigue in some people with MS? Number one, levotyrosine. Number two, 
levocarnitine. Number three, arginine. Or number four, alanine. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out the answer. Ronald writes, question. Is physical disability linked to cognitive function, mental fatigue, etc.? I'm exercising a lot, but fatigue and mental fatigue is still a really big challenge. Ronald, you point out a really important point, that there's different kinds of MS fatigue. Some MS fatigue is physical, and other MS fatigue, like cog fog, is not. It's mental. And I have many patients that find that, for example, if they read as part of their living, that as the day goes on, it gets harder to read. There are ways to combat this. Two ways that you might consider. Number one is a power nap. You got to recharge your battery. And some people find that taking a power nap in the middle of their workday allows them to return to their cognitive tasks and do really well. There are also stimulant medications that require prescriptions from doctors, but they can help trick your brain into being more awake and allow you to maintain your focus. Definitely talk to your MS provider so that you can help combat mental fatigue. Speaking of medicines to manage fatigue, Linda writes in, My neurologist put me on Adderall, and I'm thankful for that because it helps me with my fatigue. And that's absolutely right, Linda. Adderall is not the first go-to, and yet... We use it a lot in clinic because it works. There are some issues with Adderall, and I want to teach you a pro tip. It's my opinion that if you're taking a stimulant for MS fatigue, it's important to take a drug holiday about once a week. I want you to take a day off. If you have a lazy Sunday or a lazy Wednesday, a day that you don't have to do very much, I recommend not taking it that day. Why? I find that there's less tolerance and dependence over time. Now, obviously, you have to talk to your own doctor about what's right for you, but I wanted to share that pro tip. Zara asks, question, how do you motivate a patient to do physical activity? Zara, I think that we have to dump the high school mentality of all or none, of if I can run one mile, I can run three. And instead, in the adult world, we have to sneak in a little activity. We have to sneak in a little exercise. For example, could you stand up and walk in place during a commercial? Could you take the stairs one flight? Could you go for a walk on your lunch hour? Is there a way that you can sneak in a little activity and a little exercise into your life? It's my experience that if we slowly back into physical activity, it makes it much more palatable. Just food for thought. And now to answer the question of the day, which amino acid has been shown to help fatigue in some people with MS? The answer is number two, levocarnitine. My name is Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you'd like to learn more about energy levels and mood in MS, check out this playlist right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love this video right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click the circle with my face in it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream, take care.